Hi everybody and a warm welcome back to Maple Leaf Customs in Switzerland. I'm Andrew and on the bench today is a set of 10 Hot Wheels 1955 Chevy Bel Air Gassers and in a first for my channel I'm going to be offering this limited run of customs for sale. More on how that will happen near the end of the video. This is actually a do-over of my first attempt which failed at the very last step of fitting a few weeks ago. In the spirit of honesty, I posted a video of how that went. Undeterred by that setback, I immediately began work on these. In this video, I'll focus on the main parts of the customs, the interiors, the engines, the chassis, and the body exteriors. They're all going to undergo extensive changes, making each of these true customs a big challenge for me, and hopefully great purchases for 10 of my viewers. Spoiler alert, it worked out much better this time than the first attempt. And now just a short but important word about the culture of my YouTube channel. Now into my fourth season at MLC, I've never sold a car, never made a penny. My channel isn't monetized, I don't have a Patreon program set up. In fact, I've given away nearly every one of my first 197 customs, freebies mostly as donations to my local Goodwill shop for the kids around here, and several that have been shipped out to people who I thought might like that particular car. And that's not going to change in the future. But there's been a rather large call from people asking for and wanting to pay for an MLC Custom. I don't do commissions, so I thought I'd knock out 10 of these and have a draw of 10 names out of those who indicate to me that they'd like to have one. And you can do that in the comments of this video. It's open to absolutely everybody. You've seen now that I bleached the chrome interiors using some oven cleaner. It's my technique. Then with a burr tool attachment on my Dremel, I just reamed out the original interior. Now I've put in a new floor, added a drive shaft. Everything gets done by tens. <laughs> And this is a little miniature dashboard that I'm putting in each one with a hole cut out for the steering wheel column. And I'm going to deco the inside of the interior in this fashion. I just took some measurements and I made up a pinstripe interior to match the color scheme that I'm going to go with. There's a Chevy bow tie on the inside of each of these. And here's my little instrument cluster dashboard with a Bel Air logo over the glove box. And I'm using these jumbo size paper clips bent to measurement for my roll cages. And I've discovered a lot of things through trial and error. It's best to paint these first and let them dry and then put them into the car as opposed to trying to paint red posts on an all-white interior. Safety pins bent at a certain angle make for perfect size stick shifts. I give them all a red gear knob. Painted the exterior of the interiors black and here are some 3d printed steering wheels getting the red treatment in the same 3d resin print patch i made up some minuscule nos bottles and racing seats actually these are upcycled from the failed batch of 10 that i did a couple of weeks ago so that saved me a little bit of time they had already been painted and labeled they fit perfectly in this custom interior as well Whenever I have to do any chrome work or touch-ups, I use the Molotow pen refill and put a couple of drops in a dish here. And then I use this applicator, which I find works extremely well and more accurately than the pens themselves, which often give me an unwanted lava flow of chrome. Has that ever happened to you? 
you're enjoying this video, I hope you'll consider giving it a thumbs up and becoming a regular subscriber for more content just like this. This week's community shout-out goes to Metal Mania 3D TV. KC is down in Tasmania, and I consider him to be one of the premier customizers among us. KC's battling some health issues right now, so our prayers and thoughts are with you, my brother, and we're wishing you a speedy recovery, back to robust health, and a great 2023. There's a link in the description for KC's channel. I'm turning my attention now to chroming out the original Hot Wheels engines that came with the castings. Remember they got bleached out originally. I want to put some lead wires in here and I've got all these different colored copper wires but I discovered that just one is too fine. Almost too hard to see and very hard to work with. So I'm going to experiment by taking two in different colors I twist the ends together and I'm going to just insert this into the end of my pin vise and start twisting. If you can see, the more you twist, the tighter the braid becomes. And now I've got at least double the size and an interesting pattern. So I did this in all kinds of different color combos. All ten engines are a little bit different. And let me tell you, that was microsurgery. I'm doing eight regular cars and two chase cars in this batch of ten. And one of the chase cars, number one out of ten, is getting this special 3D printed Hillborn stack engine, which I think looks awesome. It gets chromed up and now I'm painting the valve covers. It'll get eight little pilot holes just like the other ones did, and its own set of lead wires. And that's going to make the one chase car very special out of this limited run. Now on to the biggest part of this project, and that's the custom chassis. The number one thing I loathed about the original casting was this big hunk of plastic in the front end and just so unrealistic looking and I took a long time to decide how to build a better mousetrap. My final call was to make this little bridge before I do any cutting. This is the original interior in its bleach state. I clip off those lifts, did a little shaving so the exhaust tips fit over and then I was able to cut away that black blob, but retain the height and the shape of the originals. This is a 3D schematic of some leaf springs that I found online and printed. It took a lot of shaving, several dry fits, careful measurements, and no small amount of good karma coming back to me all on this chassis stage of the project. The leaf springs served me very well, and I'm pleased with the results that I got. Added some axle tubes, of course. Check the height and the lift at every step along the way. Painted up some of the undercarriage detail. And I thought, while I'm customizing 10 cars, might as well put some wheelie bars on the back of these. So this is a number one styrene rod. Cut a couple of pilot holes right into the plastic chassis. I'm inserting the first two supports into the pilot holes. some activator to speed up the drying process. They're going to be met by two more that are permanently affixed in this fashion. I'll bring them together and join them at the back end. And I decided to use some dollar store beads which are not exactly uniform in size, but they serve perfectly well for little wheelie bar wheels. 
goes together like this. Lots of glue, a little bit of paint. Of course, each of the custom gets an important upgrade from the plastic Hot Wheels that came with the original castings to real rubber Samed wheels. These are called Thunder Chrome letter tires. 12s in the back, 10s up front. They really look great. When you make your next order at Sam Ed Wheels, be sure to use the promo code Maple Leaf to receive a bonus gift. That lets them know that my viewers are making some purchases. It keeps the sponsorship going. That's a help to me. Thank you. The very first thing you normally notice on a custom is the exterior, the bodywork that gets done. I'm using some spray can paint. I'm decanting it first. This is a wine color that matches my logo perfectly and some brilliant white. It's kind of a messy process and you need to be sure to let this degas for about 10 minutes or so. That's what I do before I put it into my airbrush and you can see that I've done a two-tone paint job on all 10 cars. Then I let that dry. Then I put some clear coat on the next day, and then I can begin masking and taping. Here's a tip. If you're doing some masking, take your painter's tape, like this. Stick it onto your hobby blotter and peel it up two, three, four times, and that reduces the stickiness of it, because you don't want it lifting any tape, which you're pretty well guaranteed not to if you've done a clear coat and let that dry. I use Tamiya Hobby Tape for the fine lines and this painter's tape for covering the rest of the casting. I block out the windows from the inside to prevent any overspray. Notice when I press down and apply it, I'm really just pressing it onto the Tamiya fine tape, not onto the white body, just to be sure. So I don't want it to stick to anything, I just want it to mask the car pinch it all down because that paint gets in everywhere. Even make sure the door sills are covered with smaller pieces. And now that's ready to paint the roof wine. Did that eight times and this is one of the chase cars now all masked up so that I can give it a white roof. And about 10 minutes after the paint is put on, it's still tacky, I remove the masking and hey, these came out great. Step one and the body customizing is done. Back to my Molotow refill. I'm painting the master cylinder in the open engine bay, chrome. And the taillights get a chrome base to be followed by some clear red after this is dried up. And I'm feeling good, so I went for the door handles and the key locks as well. Wow, those are small. A little bit of research revealed that these exposed radiators are black. So I did that on mine. Now this is a move that I'm doing for the very first time. I decided late in the game I don't want to use these posts and screws because I put so much work into the interiors. I want the buyers to be able to lift the casting off the interior. So I'm grinding away the posts with this burr tool. It's a titanium tip. Makes fast work out of it. And I'm going to put magnets in here, which you'll see in a couple of moments. I made up a new Swiss tuned logo that you see on my work mat in large size that goes on the trunk lid of each car as well as this Chevy badge on the back. And here are the custom maple leaf decals that I made up for the sides. The pattern is just some falling leaves 
to match the name of the channel and the color of my logo, I decided to cut these into three for easier and more accurate application. So the centerpiece goes on. Here's a little bit on the rear quarter panel with a Bel Air badge. And on the front. And the maple leaf pattern is very forgiving, so I don't need to make an exact match at the edge. And welcome to this special moment in Maple Leaf Customs history. This car, out of the 10, is custom number 200. Amanda Ferrari has number 100. I've got number 1. I kept my very first one. And someone's going to be able to get number 200 in the draw. I had to use a magnifying glass on these micro license plates to make sure they weren't upside down. They're so small. They match the numbers that are on the roof as well. Same for the chase car. Interiors are the same, the decals are the same, it's just the colors that are inverted. And I thought I'd put a little bit of this blue on the caps of the master cylinders, just to stand out a bit. And even the headlights are decals. Why? Because I can't paint a perfect circular dot, can you? The decals make sure it's perfectly round edges. How did I solve the pink glass problem? I flipped these upside down, sprayed some high gloss black on the inside, not thick. It leaves a little bit of a hint of the wine color, which is appropriate, but they're basically smoked glass now. And there they are, all lined up. Bear in mind, please, I'm no pro. These are all unique in that they're hand done, and they have their flaws. You're not getting factory precision here, but you're getting the best I can do at this stage in my journey. Let's have a closer look. They are all rollers. They're not racers. We can have a look at it now from the front to the back and top to bottom. There's the Swiss Tune logo. Chevy badge, license plates, tail lights. Samet wheels, the new front leaf spring lift kits, customized engines. I painted the little barrel in the front and put some tiny straps on there. Those are decals. Undercarriage, wheelie bars. You know what? If you can think of more details that I missed, please let me know. Because I tried to cover all the bases here. And this is the magnet scheme. Look at that. Two in the body, two in the chassis. Check out the fully customized interior. Racing seats, steering wheel, stick shift, drive shaft, NOS bottles, roll cages, decal dashboard, and door carts, and a Chevy bow tie on the outside in case you want to have this exposed on your desk or pop it open now and then. Engines are detailed, painted with lead wires, and I put some timing belts and pulleys on there. Those are decals too. See this? Clips off, clips on with the magnet, and it holds beautifully. And the chase cars are the same except for the engine, and this is number one. White Samet wheels with wine-colored rims. All the other details are the same, except for inverted colors. The glass is not affixed permanently. It's removable, so you could take that right out and just put the body on top of the interior and see inside. That's up to the buyers what they do. I don't even want to guess how many hours went into this whole project for 10 cars, but it was an awful lot, and I hope nobody will be disappointed. This is the original, and now, nose to nose, you can see I got the same lift out of these after all the careful measurements and all the mods that I had to do underneath. 
with my printed leaf springs. They really do look pretty sharp. My wife wants to keep one of these. I said, no, not this time. These are all up for sale. And the buyers are getting a numbered piece of Canadian handiwork out of my hobby room in Switzerland. That's the biggest project I've done so far. And to make sure the customs go out looking sharp, I'm doing some custom cards as I always do. This is on some heavy stock paper. I printed with a laser printer two sides, front and back. Picture of a gasser up there and my channel logo. And I don't want anyone to think I cut any corners in this project, but here I'm cutting the corners. <laughs> what a little tool punches out some round corners. Looks a little more professional. And everybody gets a hologram sticker certificate of authenticity that I affixed to the back. They're numbered 1 to 10 out of 10. And you're getting a signature series MLC custom. I'll wrap that in some bubble wrap inside the blister pack for shipping. I'm going to include a coffee coaster diorama as well with each car that goes out for your display shelf. And a couple of my channel stickers. How does it work? The cost is $50 for each car plus actual shipping anywhere in the world. I happen to know that'll be $10 to the US. If you'd like to buy one of these, leave a comment to this video stating such. There's no keyword, just write something like, I'd love to buy one. I'll draw 10 names a week from now with a random comment picker. If a name comes up with a comment like, wow, cool, customs, but no mention of wanting to buy one, I'll just draw again. Those 10 people need to contact me within a week with international shipping details. I'll go online with Swiss Post to see how much it will cost to ship to you in Upper Elbonia or wherever and let you know. You send payment via PayPal and I'll send the package to you. Thanks for visiting my channel today, I sure appreciate it, and I wish you all good luck in the draw. It's coffee time.